All right, and it's now time for us to look at the dailies this morning where we basically look at what's on the headlines and some of the stories that you should look out for in the dailies this morning. And as usual, we'll start with the standard. Absolutely, on the standard, 10 tough questions on the killing of our ABC experts. Uh, moving on to the Daily Nation, FBI may join Hunt for Paul, um, for Paul Mann's killers. All right, and on the front page of the Star newspaper, who killed Msando Chebukati demands. So, of course, it's... A day that Kenyans were really dreading. We remember that uh, he was reported missing on Friday, mm -hmm. and everybody, as per yesterday morning, was hoping that he would be found alive somewhere, but that, of course, was not the case. So, the three papers basically carrying this story of the ICT IABC expert who went missing on Friday but was found and identified yesterday by his family and found dead uh, at the city mortuary. Right, and Michael, this is the second security incident in the country that has left more questions than answers um, following closely after the attack on the home of Deputy President William Ruto. Now, tough questions are arising following the mysterious killing um, of uh, Chris Musando. There was obvious torture on his body when it was identified at the city mortuary. But on page six of the standard newspaper are those burning questions that Kenyans are asking this morning and among them is is his death related to his role in the elections and repeated statements especially on uh, TV stations where they kept saying the dead will not vote because the system in place is foolproof yes and remember he was uh, on uh, Zubeda's show on Friday mm -hmm. and uh, basically just outlining that the IEBC is ready they were supposed to carry out uh, a, a mock uh, test yesterday uh, of how it was going to be done but of course this does not happen now that he was dead. But of course, questions arising. And uh, well, the question this morning that we want to find out from you is do you believe that the police will find the murderers of the ICT uh, expert from the IEBC? But you will be hosting uh, Charles Owino, the police right. spokesman, this morning. And of course, those are some of the questions being asked. Um, among the most pertinent questions I will be asking Charles Owino, Michael, is whether there is a miscommunication within the police service itself. Because if witness accounts are anything to be believed, police officers visited the scene where Musando's body was recovered along with two other bodies and they, that team of police, took the bodies to the city mortuary. But as of Sunday, we still had another team of police which was still out on the hunt, you know, for Chris Musando. The other question is, why did it take so long to identify the body? Of course, and Kenyans are also up in arms wondering why one leader, Moses Kuria, was at the scene when the detectives found the car. And of course, there was a post that he put there which has left tongues wagging. Absolutely. But of course, those are questions that Kenyans are asking. But looking at the Daily Nation, um, still it's the same story. The headlines, FBI may join the hunt for Paul uh, Mann's killers. And I believe uh, the ambassadors from UK and US came out yesterday, first of all, uh, to uh, say that this is a very, very unfortunate incident. But also weighing in and saying that they're willing to put in and help where they can, should the Kenyans, uh, Kenyan uh, police force allow them to, uh, of course, bringing in the FBI there to help out with the investigation. Absolutely. And it is something that is raising questions because even on page 10 of the standard um, there's an article here that unknown people took photos of the scene uh, where the body was recovered and left so it says that people who are thought to be policemen went to the scene where the body was recovered and uh, took photos and left so mm -hmm. you know the question is I mean if there were pictures then it was easy to identify the body why was there no word on what really happened yes and of course this again is going to put a strain and a spotlight on our for uh, forensic uh, department when it comes to uh, investigations uh, because remember uh, when there was the death of Jacob Juma, one of the big mistakes uh, that may have been, been done by the police and those investigating is to move the car from the wherever it was uh, to the police station without doing the necessary checks. Now, here we have again the car that has moved from Roy Sambu, has been taken to the police station. Uh -huh. Then questions are being asked. Did they even dust? Who is it that possibly uh, fingerprints would be found? Right. Remember, on camera footage, uh, there are two men and one lady who were with him in his company before he uh, disappeared. So, of course, questions are being asked, who are these people? And mm -hmm. is it possible to find uh, their identity should the police do their work by dusting? Right, yeah, the CCTV camera is right there. And, of course, his car found next to TRM on Thika Road. Um, CCTV cameras also show the car was parked there by a tall, slim man at around 1 a.m. who later walked off into the air. Yeah, so, of course, questions, questions, questions. Uh, but looking at the star, because that's still the same headlines, mm -hmm. who killed him, Sando, uh, Chebukati demands. So, of course, uh, the IEBC chair 
of course, came out uh, to make it very clear that uh, even his uh, officers and uh, workmates are at risk absolutely, right now absolutely. and demanded that the state should give them security. Mm -hmm. um, when you take a look at uh, page six of the paper, Michael, uh, you actually see the pictures, and that is page 13 of the paper, rather, mm -hmm. um, the pictures of the colleagues of Chris Musando. And these are IBC officials, um, mostly many of them shocked, really, at uh, the brutal murder uh, that happened. Now, we've seen reports, although unconfirmed, uh, that uh, we've had uh, other IBC officials who've raised uh, alarm over their security as it is. Mm, and uh, well, we're waiting to see what really security measures are going to be taken. So of course, this is a story that uh, is leading to, and it's coming only seven days to the general election. That's right. But sticking to that, page nine, we also have presidential ballot papers arrive. This is on the Daily Nation, sorry. Uh, page nine, we have the presidential ballot uh, papers arrive today. Remember, this was a major bone of contention mm -hmm. with Al Gore, whether they should go ahead and print, but the Supreme Court did give the go-ahead that they go ahead and print, and they did. Uh, but there are still questions, of course, being asked and said that there is uh, 1.6 million extra ballot, ballot papers, papers, which, uh, of course, um, some are saying those are not supposed to be. But the IEBC has come out to say that they will account for every single paper. Absolutely. And uh, remember, Michael, uh, that uh, Chris Musando was literally the face of uh, the Paul's technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, on the day that uh, his uh, body was found dead, uh, he was supposed to preside over the testing of uh, the how election results will be transmitted in the country. A very big exercise that did not take off following that mysterious death. Uh, so that is on page six of the paper. So the question is whether we will still have that uh, particular testing because it is important before the election. Yes, to ensure that it works. Because, of course, one of the things that IBC is ensuring that they do is that we do not repeat the mistakes of 2013 mm -hmm. uh, by technology failure. So there should be a backup system to ensure that that happens. But let's look at page 14 because uh, this, I think, describes um, this country in many ways, uh, page 14 of the nation. And there is a snake there that basically is popping out of social media, as it were, whether from your tab, from your computer, uh -huh. or from your phone. And there are three main heads to this uh, snake that is popping out of there. One is tribalism, hatred, hate speech, which is, of course, a characteristic that we have seen far too often when we are closer to the election. Absolutely. And the problem is Kenyans like to point fingers at their leaders, blaming their leaders for propagating hate speech. But this really rests on the hands of anybody who has access to social media, anybody who has access to a phone. Do not post anything that may border on tribalism, hatred, or social, I mean, or hate speech in the run-up to the election. Because at the end of the day, peace must be maintained. And yes, yeah, something else to note is before reposting something that one receives uh, that is potentially propaganda, that is potentially not true, uh, that, that one should be careful. Let it stop at your phone. If somebody sends it to you, especially when it's not confirmed, because I even saw some posts that were, were doing rounds to do with Chris Sandos' death that were totally untrue or unconfirmed, right. which really don't help uh, the situation that we're in in this country. So that's what we have for you on The Nation. All right, and uh, just wind up on page three of The Nation, their pick season for Matatus as a city residents go up country to vote. Now, this is one more thing we'll be speaking to Charles Owino about, who is the police spokesman um, because the bigger perception is that this mass exodus um, from uh, uh, urban areas is because of fear of the upcoming polls. So the bigger question is what security measures have been put in place to assure Kenyans of their security? Absolutely. So just a quick reminder, this is Kivumbi 2017 and we're ensuring that we give you wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage of the election. Now finally looking at the star where we have uh, the headline who killed himself Sando again, of course, questions that Michelle Ngele is going to be uh, posing to the police spokesman Charles Owino uh, on the dawn debate this morning. That's absolutely uh, right, Michael. So it is now 29 minutes past the hour. We'll take a short commercial break here on Kivumbi 2017. But remember, that is the hashtag on our social media platforms. Do pose us your thoughts and questions. Remember, on our question of the day this morning, we're asking you, do you believe the police will find the killers of ICT boss Chris Musando? I will be speaking to police uh, spokesperson Charles Wino in just a few minutes. What would you like to find out from him? The hashtag is Kivumbi2017. This is our unmatched election coverage in a way only we can. For those of you on Twitter, remember you can also tweet and that's at KTN News. Or you can tweet us directly at Michelle Ngele or at Michael G. Gitonga. Right now
now. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it's time for the Dawn Debates.